we come towards the end of this most unusual of mayoral years. In our prayers tonight, we reflect on what has happened over the last year and look forward to the year to come. Let us pray for the children of our local schools, for lost educational opportunities and for new opportunities in the year to come. We give thanks for all school staff and their tireless work throughout the pandemic. We pray for our local businesses, for all which have closed permanently, and for people who have lost employment, for those who have struggled to stay afloat, for the safe reopening of businesses, that they may have opportunity to grow and flourish. We pray for our local politicians, for our Member of Parliament, and for all councillors, and for those who support behind the scenes. We give thanks for the mayor's work over this last year and pray for the incoming mayor. We pray for our local health workers and give thanks for all that they have done to care for the sick throughout the pandemic. We pray for all who are in hospital or hospice at this present time. And we remember all who have died this past year both of COVID-19 and of other ailments. We pray for all who mourn, and especially this time, we remember and give thanks for the life of Angela Cooper. We offer our prayers for all our friends and family, neighbours and constituents, using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Welcome, members. It's good to see so many of you in this room this evening. It's also a delight to be able to have my chaplain this room tonight. The first time, of course, on this year for me. Along with our mace bearers and my one high constable there behind me. We also welcome members of the public and press join us this evening, whether they do so in person or by means of live broadcast of this meeting on the Council's YouTube channel. Before we begin, I need to go over the usual housekeeping rules. While we're all delighted the fight against the pandemic has reached a stage where we're all able to meet again in the same room for the first time in a year, there's still some COVID security in place that we must observe. The desks have set a, a distance of at least two metres following COVID secure guidelines. So you may remove face coverings if you wish. If any members wish to continue wearing face covering, then please do so. If you need to leave the room during the meeting, ensure that safety to those around you are wearing a, by wearing a face mask if you leave your seat. Keep your, if you're walking around, please put your mask on. There are no fire drills planned for this evening, so if the fire alarm sounds, please leave the building by the nearest exit and assemble in School Street car park at the rear of the building. Please do not re-enter building unless you're advised to do so. I would like to remind members of protocols around speaking this evening. No member should speak unless invited to do so by myself. If you wish to speak, could I ask you to raise your hand eye until you've been acknowledged. Please, with all members in the room, make sure that you use the microphones whenever they speak, as without them, and joining, anyone joining us remotely will not be able to hear what has been said. That's most, of course, that's people on YouTube. But please use the microphones. To use the microphones, please a button up front when I invite you to speak and a moment the light, wait a moment for the light of your microphone to come on. Please remember to turn off the microphone once you have finished. Because there are too many microphones, we have cross contamination. <clears throat> At the end of the meeting, please make sure that you take all your blanks and papers and waste with you and wipe down your desk and chairs with the spray and wipe provided. Thank you. Before we can continue with commence with business tonight's agenda, I pose to hold a minute silence for His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and who sadly passed away last month. I propose to hold a minute silence in tribute after which members will be invited to speak. So please sign Jack. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, since we last met, uh, there's news of the sad loss of uh, the Mayoress, Angela Cooper. So I'd like to propose we also honour her in a, a minute silence also, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, please stand, please. <coughs> Thank you, members. <clears throat> members, please turn to your special counsel agenda. Agenda item one is apologies. I have not been informed of any apologies this evening, this evening's meeting. <clears throat> Are you aware of any apologies this evening? No apologies, thank you. Agenda item two is to declare any relevant interest in the two items of business on the special agenda. 
or any declaration of interest in relation to the two items of special agenda only, please. No, oh, thank you. Members, next item business on this special agenda council is, is on agenda item three, a proposal to confer the honour of the Freedom of Borough on Mr. Jim Wogan in recognition of his long service and support given to local groups and societies within the borough and for his outstanding contribution to the promotion of heritage in the borough. Conferring this honour on Mr. Wogan is proposed by Council Simon Tagg, second by Council White. Council Tagg, would you like to speak, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to, to move this today. And members will know Jim Morgan from the, uh, the role of many years as a mace bearer in this council. And we've seen him parade in and out with the, the mace bear, the mace, as we've seen with the, the two um, who, for the first time since um, their appointment because of COVID, have been able to come in tonight. Um, uh, Jim's involvement and contribution to numerous groups and organisations within the borough and the wider North Staffordshire area over many decades has been immense. Um, he was a founding member of the uh, Newcastle Civic Society and a representative on, on the Chamber of Trade for many years. Um, as a member of the Friends of the Museum Group and a founding member of the uh, paper uh, and the archivist of the papers of the Philip Astley Steering Group. And he's also well known as many generations of school children for his historical talks and events at the museum, night at the museum and, and Christmas events at the museum where he would dress up in, in costume in the, the Victorian street upstairs. Um, as well as giving many, many talks uh, to, to, to adults and, and all sorts of people at, in the museum on, on historical facts about Newcastle, etc., and Kids Grove and the surrounding area. Um, I would uh, therefore um, think there's nobody more worthy than, than Jim to be awarded Freedom of the Borough, and I'm very pleased to move it today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tag. Councillor Simon White, would you like to second the recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, <coughs> Councillor Tag. Jim is a well-known local historian who has committed large parts of his life to the research and subsequent writing to ensure the history of our local borough is well documented and understood. With particular reference to the mining industry, which dominated our landscape for so long over the last 150 years. During this time, he worked from 1957 to 1989 as an administration officer for the National Coal Board at various local collieries and area headquarters. He was also the last curator at Chatley Whitfield Mining Museum until its closure in August 1997. During the years, Jim has spoken at over 100 events to various organisations on the history of both Newcastle under Lyne and the coal and ironstone mining industry. He was awarded Newcastle under Lyne second ever certificate of outstanding service by then the Mayor, Councillor David Clark in 2007. Jim also became the mace bearer to the mayor in 2017 until his retirement eight months ago. He was an active member of the mini pit group set up to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the mini pit disaster in January 1918. And he became a member of the steering group set up to rejuvenate the mini pit site in Halmer End. I'm sure all members will agree with me that Jim holds more information of our local history than anybody we know who is currently living. And to this end, he has just finished his own paper called A Personal Perspective of Coal and Iron Stone Mining in North Staffordshire. Finally, I personally would like to say it's in my honour to second Jim's nomination for the freedom of the borough of Newcastle under Lyne, and I have witnessed firsthand in his dedication in spreading the word of our great history and his support for our civic traditions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any members wishing to speak? Councillor Julie Cooper. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to say uh, I'm very glad that Jim is getting this honour. Uh, Jim and I have become very good friends over the years due to the fact he used to be on conservation. So I was with him in 2006 until he actually uh, came out of doing conservation. He's sadly missed from there. Um, I also was on the same committee with him when I was in um, 
civic society, which unfortunately civic society is also folded. So yes, I have become very good friends with Jim. And not only do I see him as Mace Bearer, but I see him as a very close friend. So thank you very much for giving him this honour and he was well deserved. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Stubbs, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on behalf of the Labour Group, uh, can we offer our full support for, for this nomination tonight? Uh, Jim's work's been uh, fantastic across the community. Uh, personally, his work and the, and, and the coal fields uh, is amazing. And it's nice to see that he's also in, involved in the Dick Lake Memorial uh, work that's going on in, in my ward. Uh, he, he's been a, a, a very good servant to this council. And, and the really nice thing, he is one of our own. He's Newcastle born and bred, uh, and I'm delighted to support this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council Sweeney, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to, to support this. I've known, I've known Jim for a number of years. His, uh, his grandson was at the same class at Castle County Primary School as my daughter. So I know him and his daughter really, really quite well. Last time I saw him, we were out lifting in, um, in town hall actually for the county elections and it, he stopped me. And even then he couldn't stop himself telling me all the things about the area and pointing, pointing buildings out in West Brampton, what this was, what that was from the past. And I think this is a, it's a, a fully deserved honor. Um, I think he's a, he's a tremendous bloke. He's a real, real credit to Newcastle and uh, he's also a nice, very nice man. Um, and I absolutely totally support this. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Moffitt, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so on behalf of um, the people of Audley, we will be absolutely delighted to see Jim Worgan given the freedom of the borough. Um, there has been reference made to his work with the mini pit uh, centenary commemoration. Um, and I can say that the, the work that Jim did, the fundraising that he did, has made sure that that disaster that happened over 100 years ago now will be remembered by future generations. Uh, he's so warmly loved and revered by um, people everywhere. And I know that there is often um, talk of national treasures. Well, I think Jim Wogan probably reaches that accolade, but he certainly is the borough treasure. Um, and, you know, I'm absolutely delighted. We know that uh, the work at the mini pit will be ongoing. And as we turn the concrete cap into a lasting memorial, we, may, we will make sure that Jim Wogan's name is one of those names that's down there. Um, my personal thanks to him attending the tree planting. We planted a tree for every lost miner at the new uh, heritage site uh, at Halmer End. And um, Jim and Baroness Golding came along and honoured the volunteer tree planters. And um, I can't say enough really about what an honour it is to know Jim and how delighted I personally am that he's been given the freedom of the borough. Thank you. Councillor John Williams. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, nobody deserves it, uh, the freedom of the borough as much as what Jim, um, Jim Wogan. I used to see him when I was walking to various meetings, hey, I'll rain or slow, and he'd be taking his dog for a walk. And it was about communities and the coal fields Working at communities, we had coal fields all over um, Newcastle, and that community of uh, coal workers uh, was represented uh, none better than what Jim did. And so uh, I'll welcome this uh, this award. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Proctor, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I had the pleasure and privilege of working with Jim Morgan on the Dig Lake Colliery Disaster Memorial Weekend. Uh, and Jim was very heavily involved in the presentations <clears throat> that took place at the Methodist Cemetery and the Methodist Schoolroom uh, in, in Bignall End. Uh, Jim was an absolute delight to work with. And perhaps I'll sum him up or his contribution, uh, sum up his contribution in the Ravensmead School took all of their classes into the Sunday school room to be there for a talk by Jim Morgan 
on the mining disaster. And anyone who can hold 90 children aged between five and 11 spellbound and they didn't want the talk to end. The education that he gave them on the day was incredible. And as Councillor Moffat said, uh, his contribution to the parish of Audley because of the mining disaster has been incredible and we are eternally grateful to him. This award is well deserved. Thank you. Councillor Tag, would you like to sum up? All been, all been said, Mr Mayor. Thank you. The recognition has been moved and seconded. All those in favour? That's unanimous, thank you. Members, the next and last item of business on the Special Council agenda is item four, a proposal to confer the honour of freedom of borough upon the Royal Stoke University Hospital for its continuing work with the residents of the borough, in particular selfish work, dedication and care given to borough residents beyond and throughout the, the coronavirus pandemic. I'm sorry about that, so my voice has been to go a little bit. <clears throat> I propose to confer this honour upon the Royal Stoke University Hospital and the proposal will be seconded by Council Tag. I propose this because it's something very close to my heart of my personal life, saving my life uh, and saving members of my family. And from 1948 onwards, it served the people of North Staffordshire very, very exceedingly good, under numerous names. It's now called the Royal Stoke University of Hospital, but that's quite a comparatively recent name. So I, I, I'm very honoured and proud to, to propose this. Um, can I sign Jack Ryan second there, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, really back what you just said there, really pleased to, to second this. And I think um, we, we've been through a lot over, over the last year, all of us have mm -hmm. in, our, in, our, in ways uh, some worse than others, but we've always known we've had the health service and our local hospital there to back us up. And we've, we, you know, we, for a very long period of time, people every night on on Wednesdays, 8 p.m., clapped for, for, for carers and for our health workers. I think it's not only right now that, um, you know, as we're emerging from the pandemic and we are moving in the right direction, uh, is that we now take up this, which you propose, Mr. Mayor, of course, um, that we, we do this back in your first meeting back in last September. And I think it's an honour which, um, you know, I think this borough can convey and it can convey in, in the special circumstances. And we've always done that and we're doing it twice tonight. But this one is to to a, a, an establishment, an organisation which is there for everybody. And we've all got our stories of how, you know, it's helped our family and um, where people have, have, have had care um, through, throughout their lives, really, from, from this hospital. And um, I'm really proud to, uh, that the borough would give freedom to, to the hospital and um, second you wholeheartedly, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Are you a member like to speak? Councillor Stubbs, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think it goes without saying that uh, the Labour group fully support this. I think it brings into sharp focus this last 14 months what a valuable asset we have right on our doorstep. It's literally, you know, a mile, a mile and a half away from this very spot. Uh, I was I was born there, so you know, my life started there, and will I suspect probably end there at some stage, but it is such a valuable asset and those people that work and actually live in that asset, because that's what they do, Mr. Mayor. It's, not, it's a calling. It's not a job. It's an absolute calling to work in the NHS. And this is the least we can do for those individuals that have been on the front line over the last 14, 15 months. I fully support this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Recommendation moved and seconded. Can I take a vote, please? That's unanimous, thank you. Members, that concludes the business of this special council meeting, but please remain seated as I intend to proceed straight through the into agenda of a scheduled annual council meeting. Members, we now turn to the business of the annual general council meeting. Agenda one is apologised, but I'm carrying forward from the last one. 
Agenda two, item two, declarations of interest, members are then declarations of interest to be made on any of the agenda items in tonight's annual council meeting. Council Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, there, spare, spare agendas are on their way. Members, agenda item three requires us to approve as a correct record of minutes are held on 24th of February, 18th of March, 2021. Those minutes run from page five to 26 of your agenda. Members, can the minutes for both these meetings be uh, agreed. Mr. Mayor, I'd move those and just make a comment on the the, um, the meeting that was held about the Warris Corry landfill issues is that uh, Cabinet received an update uh, from uh, the outcome from that meeting and also we'll be bringing a paper to the July Cabinet here, uh, July Council here and we'll also be taking a, a paper to Cabinet. So we, we're on top of that and we're uh, obviously holding the A to account and also the operator. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Joan. The next item business to elect a mayor for the forthcoming council year. I've been made aware of two nominations, Councillor Ken Owen and Councillor John Williams. Could I please ask nominations to formally move and second the nomination of Councillor Ken Owen, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> It uh, gives me great pleasure to uh, nominate Ken Owen for the role of Mayor of the Loyal and Ancient Borough of Newcastle under Lyme. Ken is an excellent, hardworking <clears throat> councillor dedicated to the service of the residents of Holditch and Chesterton. Ken, I believe, has all the attributes that are required for him to carry out this very important and prestigious role, and I therefore nominate him to be Mayor of the Borough. Thank you. Second, please. So, Mr Mayor, I'd like to second um, Ken and also give the support of the Conservative Group to him stepping up as Mayor. It's been an unusual year for, for yourself and for the Deputy Mayor, uh, and I think hopefully with, with the start of, of a new term, uh, the elected Mayor tonight will begin to you know have some events, etc., like we would normally have with the Mayor. I'd also like to say that, obviously, um, um, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the mayoress, which is Rachel, will, will join Ken if elected tonight. And I've known Rachel for, for many years as, and got to know Ken very well as well, so that I, I can vouch for what um, um, Councillor Proctor says. And uh, if they're elected tonight, I, I wish them luck. Thank you, Councillors. Could I now ask, please, for someone to formally move and second the nomination of Councillor John Williams? Councillor Tubbs, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's a great honour for me to propose Councillor John Williams for the role of Mayor of the Loyal and Ancient Borough of Newcastle under Lyme. As many of you know, John has been an active member of this chamber for a period spanning the last three decades, winning his first election on the 4th of May 1995 and accumulating a term of, of office of 26 years and 15 days, or 9,512 days if anybody else is counting. A genuine local community champion. John has worked alongside some outstanding local councillors over that time, Sylvia Butler and Joan Whitfield amongst them, but I'm sure everyone understands that the partnership that he and Councillor Jill Williams have forged, not only in Cross Heath, but across the, the borough as a whole is without challenge. Highlighted most significantly when John served as the mayor's consort during Jill's period as mayor in 2001 too. In 2012, with the addition of 10 new Labour councillors on the local authority, John was asked to serve in the cabinet and happily accepted the portfolio for planning, an area which he obviously excels. And he did so with extent, uh, distinction for the life of the Labour administration. And I was personally indebted not only for his technical guidance during that time, but also for the sage piece of advice over a mug of tea in the kitchen in St. Michael's Road. John has held several roles within the local Labour group, but significantly has acted both as leader and deputy leader on, on occasion and his ability not only to care for local residents, but to promote future generations of elected officials from all sides of the aisle is unparalleled. And many councillors in this chamber will be thankful 
for the kind words and encouragement they have received from John. I know I certainly have. Though it is clear for all to see John's love of everything planning, he has also served across several scrutiny committees, even now serving on licensing and public protection and the licensing subcommittee, as well as acting as substitute for several others. On behalf of the council, John has been active on several outside bodies, having served with distinction on bodies such as the Ramsey Road Community Centre Management Committee, the North Staff's Left Strategic Board, and a trustee of the Newcastle under Lyme Alms House Charity, to name but a few. Mr. Mayor, it is generally surprising to me and many hundreds of residents across the borough that John has never held the honour of being the borough's first citizen. The accomplishments I've listed previously barely scratch the surface as to what this man has put in, and I ask members across the political spectrum to set aside partisan politics and elevate a councillor that is so very deserving. Not one member in this chamber can deny the service John has given to this authority, and with that in mind, I cannot comprehend anyone who thinks that John wouldn't be a perfect ambassador for Newcastle. Therefore, in closing, Mr Mayor, it's my absolute pleasure to nominate Councillor John Williams as Mayor for 2021-22. Thank you. A seconder, please. Paul, Paul, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would like to formally second the nomination for Councillor John, John Williams. I don't think I can really add anything to what um, Councillor Stubbs has said. I think he said said it all, and I'm sure we've all got um, kind words in thinking that um, John would be more than capable and able of carrying out the duties of the mayor. So I'm happy to second this nomination. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? As there are two councillors duly nominated, I will now move to the vote. Voting one will be shown by have show of hands, please, in the normal manner. All those in favour of election, Ken Owen, please, please raise your hands. Thank you. All those in favour of Council John Williams, please clearly raise your hands. Council. Oh, sorry, it's so it's gone again. Thank you. Seconds. <laughs> Council Ken Owen is now elected as Mayor of Newcastle. Thank you. All right. The mayoral party will now retire for building the three mayors.
Good evening, members. Please be seated. My first duty as your new mayor is to make my declaration of accept acceptance of office. I, Kenneth Owen, having been elected to the office of mayor for the borough of Newcastle underline, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability. I understand, I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of members of the Borough Council of Newcastle and the Lyme in the performance of my function in that office. The next item of business on the agenda is to appoint a deputy mayor for the forthcoming municipal year. I have been aware of two nominations, Councillor Jill Burnett and Councillor Elizabeth Shanton. Could I ask please for someone to formally move and second the nomination of Councillor Jill Burnett? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, could I congratulate you on your appointment, being the first to do that, and may you have a, obviously, a, a good year as mayor. Um, I'd um, like to, uh, obviously, um, with great pleasure, nominate uh, Jill Burnett for the role of deputy mayor for the next municipal year. She's been working in her local community for over 20 years as a borough councillor, Kidsgrove town councillor, and has been re-elected to the county councillor in the uh, clean sweep of conservative wins across Newcastle and Kidsgrove on May the 6th. And as a former mayor of Kidsgrove, she knows the ropes on the mayoralty and will be able to assist you, I think, ably, Mr. Mayor, during your duties this year as your deputy. So I, I move uh, Jill Burnett. Thank you. And um, can I ask Councillor Stephen Sweeney to second the nomination, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great uh, privilege to, to second Jill as uh, the leader says she's been uh, the mayor of Kidsgrove. She's been a councillor for 20 odd years, good representative for the mayor of Kidsgrove, uh, for the people of Kidsgrove as you were. And um, it gives me great, great really. I would point out, I think, uh, I was looking at Wikipedia tonight. What a, what a marvelous reference system that is. And uh, I was looking through when the, the last time Kidsgrove um, had, the, had the mayor of, 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 uh, of Newcastle and it was John McMillan, 2002-03 followed the year later by the great Raimondo Slater of uh, three, three, 2003 and 2004. So I think once again, I don't, I'm not political because I'm not like that, but I think um, it's great once again that this council is now showing that Kidsgrove is an integral part of uh, Newcastle Borough. And uh, I've, I have great, great pleasure and honour in seconding, uh, seconding Jill for this. Thank you. A uh, quick thank you to uh, Councillor Simon Tagg and Councillor Stephen Sweeney for their proposal and second, uh, seconding the nomination of Councillor Burnett. Could I now ask please for someone to formally move and second the nomination of Councillor Elizabeth Shanton? My, thank you. Uh, Councillor Mike Stubbs, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on your appointment this evening. Thank you. It is indeed a great honour again for me to propose Councillor Elizabeth Shenton to the role of Deputy Mayor of the Loyal and Ancient Borough of Newcastle and Lyme. As with our previous nomination, Lizzie is a shining example of a community focused local councillor. Since her election in 2006, she has been pivotal in the town ward, firstly representing the ward for the Liberal Democrats, we won't hold that against you, uh, before moving to the Labour Group in uh, 2014, a full 15 years continuous service. Throughout her time in office, she has championed several causes, most notably a myriad of projects in the Lyonbrook area of Newcastle, community groups to cricket clubs, football teams to community events, 
Lizzie has been at the centre of all things community for the previous two decades. As well as her firm roots in the community, Lizzie has fulfilled her obligations in this chamber and more, embracing several scrutiny committees, many of which she has acted as chair. Lizzie has been at the forefront of constitutional work within the borough for the majority of her term of office and provided a healthy financial scrutiny, both in administration and opposition, in an area that be, can be complex and difficult to negotiate. As many of you know, Lizzie proudly held both the, the deputy and leadership of this council and showed a fortitude during a difficult time for members and officers alike, which was testament to her character. Her ability to rise above the trolls and Bob comments, far too many of which came from this chamber, I might add, was demonstration of the personal qualities that Lizzie brings to her service here at the borough. In 2018-19, Lizzie was de delighted to become the Deputy Mayor of Newcastle under Lyme and represented the loyal and agent borough on multiple occasions, often stepping in for the Mayor at short notice. Such was her devotion to the residents of Newcastle, and Lizzie was incredibly active throughout her year as Deputy Mayor. Mr Mayor, as you all well know, the, the morality is not a game, it's not a financial prize, and it most definitely isn't a runners-up prize, and those that take the roles must uphold the strongest of traditions Let's face a pointed phone call from the likes of Sandra Hamilton or indeed John Cooper, something none of us would request, I don't think. The role requires gravitas. It requires fortitude. Skills Councillor Shenton has shown not once, but on multiple occasions. And it is for that reason that I ask members to set aside the games, the personal differences and elect a deputy mayor that we can all be proud of. And therefore I'm delighted to nominate Councillor Elizabeth Shenton for deputy mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I ask Councillor Dave Jones to second the nomination, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on your appointment. It gives me great pleasure to second the nomination of Councillor Shenton for Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stubbs and Councillor Jones for proposing and seconding uh, Councillor Elizabeth Shenton. Are there any other nominations? No. As there are two councillors duly nominated, I will now move to the vote. Voting will be by show of hands in the normal manner, please. Um, all those in favour of the election of Councillor Jill Burnett as Deputy Mayor for 2021-2022. Please clearly raise your hands. Thank you. All those in favour of Councillor Elizabeth Shanton as Deputy Mayor for 2021-22, please clearly raise your hand. Thank you. Is there any abstentions? Didn't notice any. No abstentions. The result of the uh, vote is that Councillor Jill Burnett will serve uh, as Deputy Mayor for 2021. 22. A round of applause. For you. Would, would uh, Councillor Burnett, Deputy Mayor, uh, like to say a few words?
Um, I'd just like to say I'm very honoured to have been uh, appointed the Deputy Mayor and I'll help you whichever way I can in the next year. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, the next stage is for the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Jill Burnett, to read out her declaration of acceptance of office, please. I, Gillian Burnett, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor for the Borough of Newcastle Underline, hereby declare that I take said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. Thank you. I now come uh, to item six on the agenda that requires me to announce my appointments for the coming year. Uh, my first appointment, uh, which I wish to announce, is that of my mayoress. I, Kenneth Owen, hereby appoint Rachel Eaton to be my mayoress for the next municipal year. Thank you, Rachel. My second appointment that I wish to make is that of my High Constable. I, Kenneth Owen, hereby appoint Daniel MacDonald, who happens to be my eldest grandson, as my High Constable for the next municipal year. The next appointment is that of my cadet. I, Kenneth Owen, hereby appoint Flight Sergeant Chloe Weymouth to be my cadet for the next municipal year. <laughs> the next appointment is that of my chaplain. I, Kenneth Owen, hereby appoint the Reverend Joshua Penduck to be my chaplain for the next municipal year. <laughs> my final appointment to be made is that of the Mace Bearers. I, Kenneth Owen, hereby appoint Angela May and Alderman Chris Malkin to be my mace bearers for the next municipal year. <laughs> Item seven provides me with the opportunity to address members of the council and the people who have joined us remotely on my hopes and aspirations for my year in office. Firstly, I would like to thank the council for electing me as mayor of the borough of Newcastle under Lyme. I am very honored and will commit to carry out my duties to the best of my ability with a polite and professional manner as you would expect. The role of mayor is a vital part of our borough's heritage and I promise to do my utmost during this next year to make the borough proud of our heritage and to put Newcastle under Lyme firmly on the map. The role of mayor is an ambassadorial role promoting the borough and throughout Staffordshire and further afield. Whilst importantly supporting the residents of our loyal and ancient borough by recognizing the work they do in so many different ways. As we come out of the lockdown, I will be looking forward to attending engagements throughout my year. And my first civic engagement will be that of my civic service in July. Members will be notified of this in the near future. I would now like to personally thank former Mayor John Cooper 
for carrying out his duties diligently and with great enthusiasm during a particularly uh, difficult period for us all. On this note, I would now like to invite the leader of the council, Councillor Tag, to address the council, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I, it's a pleasure to do the vote of thanks for the retiring Mayor, uh, John. And I think it's been a, a difficult year for us all, as you say, Mr. Mayor, but also a year tinged with sadness as well. But I think uh, John's uh, second year of Mayor was something that particularly Angela um, obviously uh, was proud to see. And I think we, she did see that. Uh, but of course, it's a year when the usual events weren't taking place and there was no mayor's reception or, or mayor's ball. So it wasn't a normal year and there wasn't that many events for, for the mayor to go. But we, we did, he did represent the borough, obviously, following the, the sad news of uh, the death of the Prince of um, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Um, and I think um, John is, is, is dedicated to the, to the job he's done. And I'd like to thank him on behalf of the council and wish him all the best for the future as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Simon Tag, for that, those words. Would any other member like to speak at this stage? Councillor Stubbs, please. Can I uh, echo the, the Leader of the Council's uh, words about the outgoing Mayor? John served through a tumultuous time in the history of this borough, uh, and he's done it with uh, grace and favour that uh, many of us would wish we had ourselves. Uh, and with the, the trials and tribulations that he's gone through and also his family have gone through at the same time, uh, I'm very proud to, to call him a fellow councillor for this Borough Council. Uh, he's been uh, an absolute, uh, you know, it's, it's, like, it's hard to put it into words, uh, Mr. Mayor, just you know, how difficult his year has been uh, and to, to see him come through the other side of it so well. Uh, yeah, he's, he's done an amazing job. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stubbs, for those words. Uh, Councillor Proctor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that uh, the, the word that we would all use for uh, Councillor John Cooper is dignity, uh, and he has carried out his role and responsibilities on behalf of this borough, as he always does, with great dignity. And it's for that that I would like to thank him most of all uh, through most difficult council times and personal times, but he's done it all again with great dignity. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Councillor Proctor. Thank you, members. Councillor John Cooper. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, <laughs> Councillor Reddish. You'd like to say a few words. I was words. a bit like putting my buzzer on, to be fair. <laughs> Um, I was very privileged to be John and indeed Angela's deputy mayor last time around, as it were, and I know how much he was respected across the county, across the borough, and in fact further afield. And I know that under normal circumstances, John and Angela would have done an excellent job. Yet again, huge potential there. Sadly, for various reasons, it didn't... Uh, <coughs> didn't happen, but through no fault of John. So I would just like to uh, express my gratitude and my good wishes really to John and his family. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Councillor Reddish. Any other members wish to say anything? Or? Thank you, members. Councillor John Cooper, I'm afraid that because of the COVID secure restrictions still in place, I am not able to formally present your retiring mayor medal to you, but I will make sure that these are with you by the end of this evening's meeting. I now call upon the retiring mayor, Councillor John Cooper, to respond to the vote of thanks. Councillor Cooper, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm very grateful and thankful for all the kind words that have been spoken about me and more so my deceased wife. Um, it's been a very unusual year to be a mayor and I'm grateful and thankful for the honour of being mayor of Newcastle for a second time. 
I'm very proud to be a Newcastle councillor and I always will be. I think it's one of my greatest achievements in life. Uh, I, I wish to especially thank the officers for the work they've done for me as mayor. And, and there's much more work for them than what most people realise, especially with the mayor secretary, Jeff. He's been very understanding and very helpful. I'm very grateful to that. My year was very different with COVID uh, regulations, which stopped an awful lot of events, normal conditions. Uh, of course, about the last six months, I've been nursing my wife until she died a few, just a couple of weeks ago. So that's left me mentally and physically very tied down. Um, it's left me actually a little bit drained and I'm so grateful for all the support from fellow councillors and officers uh, who wish me well and support him when I've needed. Uh, I'm not in the best of mood to give uh, a, a long speech. Obviously, I'm quite emotional at the moment and um, I seem to be losing my voice also. So I'll just finish off by saying I think Thank you very much to everybody who's helped me and I've had a, 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 overall a good year. Thank you very much, fellow councillors. Thank you. I think that goes without saying. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Cooper. Members, we now turn to agenda item 10. The leader will now appoint as deputy leader and cabinet with portfolios. Councillor Simon Tagg, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to inform the council, a, a change to cabinet this year. Um, Councillor Helena Maxfield will be stepping down from the cabinet. Thank you for the work that you've done over the last couple of years. That seems to have flown by so much during the, the COVID period on, on the, um, obviously being the uh, uh, cabinet member for com community safety and well-being and Jill Heeson will be joining the cabinet in, in that role. But I'll go through my cabinet roles now. Uh, Deputy Leader, I reappoint Stephen Sweeney. Um, he will have the portfolio of finance and town centres and growth. Um, environmental and recycling will be Trevor Johnson, as before. Uh, strategic planning will be Paul Northcott. Uh, leisure, culture and heritage will be Jill Waring. And of course, as I've just said, community safety and wellbeing will be Jill Heeson. And then one council, people and partnerships will be myself as the portfolio holder. So those are my appointments for this uh, council year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Tagg. Members, we now move on to item 11 on page 27 of your agenda. This item of business is to appoint the members, chairs and vice chairs of committees. An appendix showing the nominations has been tabled this evening. Firstly, appointment of committees. I'm going to take it as read that the relevant group leaders and deputies have nominated and seconded their respective members. Can I ask all members in favour of making the appointments for committees as set out in the paper that is tabled tonight to clearly raise their hands, please? I uh, think that's unanimous decision. Thank you. Anyone against? No, thank you. Next, appointments of chairs and vice chairs. Again, members, the nominations are in the paper tabled at the meeting this evening. You will find the nominations on the second to last page. 
I am going to take it as read that the relevant group leaders and deputies have nominated and seconded their respective members. You will see that there are two nominations for each position available. I will, therefore, call out each nomination, committee by committee, and ask that you clearly raise your hand for the nominee that you would like to vote for when their name is called. Firstly, the Chair of the Audit and Standards. All those in favour of Councillor Sarah Pickup, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Paul Waring, please show by raising your hand. Councillor Paul Waring is elected as Chair of the Audit and Standards. We move on to the Vice Chair of Audit and Standards. All those in favour of Councillor Sylvia Diamond, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Barry Panter, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Barry Panter is appointed as Vice Chair of Audit and Standards. Next is Chair of the Conservation Advisory Working Party. All those in favour of Councillor Alison Gardner, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Julie Cooper, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Julie Cooper is appointed as Chair of Conservation Advisory Working Party. The Vice Chair of Conservation Adver Advisory Working Party all those in favour of Councillor Annabel Lawley, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Trevor Johnson, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Trevor Johnson is appointed. Chair of Licensing and Public Protection. All those in favour of Councillor Olszewski, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Simon White, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Simon White is appointed. Vice Chair of Licensing and Public Protection. All those in favour of Councillor Dave Jones, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Graham Hutton, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Hutton is appointed. The Chair of Planning. All those in favour of Councillor John Williams, please indicate by raising your hand.
All those in favour of Councillor Andy Fear, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Andy Fear is appointed. The Vice Chair of Planning. All those in favour of Councillor Sue Moffat, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Marion Radish, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Reddish is appointed. The Chair of Health, Wellbeing and Partnership Scrutiny Committee. All those in favour of Councillor Sue Moffat, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Ian Wilkes, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Ian Wilkes is appointed. The Vice Chair of Health, Wellbeing and Partnership Scrutiny Committee. All those in favour of Councillor Ruth Wright, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of, of Councillor Julie Cooper, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Julie Cooper is appointed. The Chair of Economy, Environment and Place Scrutiny Committee. All those in favour of Councillor Dave Jones, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Gary White, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Gary White is appointed. The Vice Chair of Economy, Environment and Play Scrutiny Committee all those in favour of Councillor Emilia Rout, please indicate by raising your hand. All those in favour of Councillor Helena Maxfield, please indicate by raising your hand. <coughs> Councillor Maxfield is appointed. Chair of Finance, Assets and Performance Scrutiny Committee. All those in favour of Councillor Mike Stubbs, please indicate. All those in favour of Councillor Mark Holland, please indicate by raising your hand. Councillor Mark Holland is appointed. Vice Chair of Finance, Assets and Performance Scrutiny Committee. All those in favour of Councillor Sarah Pickup, please indicate. All those in favour of Councillor Burt Proctor, please indicate. Councillor Proctor is appointed. Members, we arrive at agenda item 12, which is a report asking members to note the position on councillor appointments to external roles and outside bodies. This report 
can be found on pages 31 to 33 of your main agenda. In addition, an appendix has been circulated this evening detailing officers' understanding of current appointments. Can I ask Councillor Simon Tagg if you would like to introduce the report and move the recommendation, please? Thank you, yes, uh, Mr Mayor. Firstly, congratulations to those chairs and vice chairs who've been appointed. Uh, the, the Council will be pleased to know we don't have to vote on every single one of these because obviously it says in the report uh, appointed on, on four yearly terms and there are, are differences within there which we will see. I think the main really for, for, for emphasising this, this report today is um, if, if any members between now and next year are involved in any of these or, or ones that haven't met or, or have, have wound up that we don't know about, could they please let um, our um, officer Dan uh, Dickinson uh, to uh, so we could have an updated list next year when we have our annual meeting at the start of the new council after next year's all out elections but with that um, uh, statement I'll just move the recommendations thank you chair uh, Mr Mayor thank you councillor Tag can I ask councillor Sweeney uh, whether he would like to second the recommendations please yeah thank you Mr Mayor happy to second that thank you Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Are there any other members wishing to speak on this item? Councillor Stubbs, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. With regard to the Waste and Mineral Site Liaison Committee, does this council believe that that committee has any value at all, seeing as it's ignored the councillors of this borough for the last two or three, if not 10 years? And what value do we actually get from sending representatives that are just going to be ignored further? I, I, I have no opinion either way, Mayor, but I wonder if members of the council would like to debate that particular committee. Uh, I, don't, I don't wish it to be something that goes on for hours, but is there a value in sending co uh, committee members here and tying ourselves to the organisation that is slowly poisoning uh, parts of Newcastle? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you for your comments, um, Councillor Stubbs. Can I ask uh, the leader, Simon Tagg, to respond, please? Yes, Mr Mayor. I think I, I completely um, sympathise with the comments, really, uh, that Councillor Stubbs has made. And as uh, I believe he's talking about the Wallace Quarry Mineral one, because some of the other mineral groups are very uh, are useful and, and active. But of course, we've, we've reached, reached a, a bit of a stalemate with the operator. And, and I know the Borough Council's reps, as well as me as the County Council rep in regard of Wallace Quarry, didn't go to the, the last meeting. And we, I, I've, I've pledged that I won't attend as a County Council's rep until those meetings are open and broadcast. And I think once they are, I think we can have an open and, and a debate about that uh, it's not going to go away i think we need to have council representatives on there and if we even by not going i think we, we're making a statement by being those reps that are not going because we're not happy with the way that it's run so i would sympathize but i think let's um obviously see what happens there and the pressure we're we're putting on uh, and also uh, pressure on the environment agency will hopefully uh, lead to some improvement and we'll be we'll be watching very closely on that thank you mr mayor Thank you, Councillor Tag. Any comment from? I'm sorry. Uh, is there any other members wishing to speak on this? No. Okay. I will. I will. In the end. Uh, I mean, yes, it, it's an endurance test, I think, being on the Wallace Quarry Liaison Committee um, as a council rep. But I think our leader is absolutely right that actually silence speaks a lot and if we don't attend it's actually sending a message that we don't approve of what's going on so i would firmly endorse that yes uh, we do send reps uh, even if it's a silent message because it's a very loud message <laughs> that's my comments and we will continue to battle uh, the four of us for for the, for the good of the whole borough Thank you, Councillor Reddish. Uh, would Councillor Sweeney or Councillor Tag care to sum up? Um, and then we can put the proposal to the vote, please. Mr Mayor, just go straight to the, uh, the vote, thanks. Okay. The recommendation has been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please. Anyone against? No. 
I think that's unanimous decision. Uh, and we're all in favor. Thank you. Agenda item 13 asks members to note the calendar of meetings for the municipal year. A copy of the report and the calendar of meetings can be found on pages 35 to 45 of your main agenda. Councillor Simon Tagg, can I ask you to introduce the report and move the recommendation, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In doing that, just, just to, as people will have read the, uh, the list of meetings, our full set of meetings for, for Cabinet when we obviously implement the, uh, the business of the Council and also a full meet, uh, schedule of Council meetings um, and also schedule of scrutiny committees as well to uh, scrutinise Cabinet decisions. Uh, just make everybody aware of item two there, which is the operation of the six-month rule, which has, has, has resumed now. Uh, and of course, we're all aware of the, the decision, obviously, uh, and the court case relating to meetings in person. And that's why we, we're all here tonight. And um, hopefully that will um, continue and there'll be no need to, to go back into restrictions um, as we go forward, that we beat COVID and, and we get back to some, some sort of normality and, and hopefully full normality later in the year. But I'll move those recommendations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Tag. Councillor Sweeney, would you like to second the recommendations, please? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Are there any other members wishing to speak? No. Thank you. The recommendation has been moved and seconded. All those in favour? All those against? I think that's a unanimous decision in favour. Thank you. Item 14, members. It's a report requesting the confirmation of the Constitution. It can be found on pages 47 and 48 of your agenda. Can I ask Councillor Simon Tagg if you would like to introduce the report and move the recommendation, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I will do that. And um, um, to point out that um, we, we would have been expecting a, a, a report at this council on the independent numeration panel. Uh, but they've got it obviously being independent they can they can obviously um, look into this as much as they want and of course with with covid um, restrictions uh, that's been delayed so we were expecting that later in the year and of course which what we did say when we discussed that at a previous annual council any uh, recommendations that we we accept would be implemented from the start of the 2022 uh, new council term so that's why that isn't on here but as for the constitution it's in a lot better state than it used to be and is available online for anybody to have a look at and thank you to our officer Dan Dickinson for ensuring that it is up to date and we've got no more additions to bring to this meeting at the moment um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Tag. Councillor Sweeney, would you like to second the recommendations, please? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Are there any other members wishing to speak? No. Thank you. The recommendation has been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please. All those against? No. Unanimous in favour. Thank you. Members, items 15 and 16 are urgent business and the exclusion of the press and public to consider confidential reports. I have received no items of urgent business and there are no confidential reports to consider. That concludes the business for this meeting. And just before I close the meeting, I would like to thank everyone involved in preparing for this evening's meeting, which I think has gone really well. I would like to wish everyone present in the room a safe journey home. 
And to those who have joined us remotely, please enjoy the rest of your evening. Please can we vacate this room to allow the facilities management team to prepare for tomorrow. Also, please make sure that you take all belongings with you and wipe down the contact points on your chairs and tables with the sanitizer and wipes provided. Thank you all very much. <laughs>